Hello everyone, I'm Osama, an application engineer at Synapticon, and in today's video we will talk about the setup wizard. So last time we talked about the firmware update, and the next step after doing the firmware update is the setup wizard. So we can click on setup wizard here. The setup wizard is a tool that will help you configure your drive. Basically the essential configurations are the brake configuration, the motor and the encoder configuration. The first step in the setup wizard is to give a name to the drive. This name can be used to distinguish different drives one from the other. Once we give it a name, we click on next step. The second step in the setup wizard will be the brake setup. So if you have a brake um, on your setup, you click on yes. And here we can see the different parameters that we need to have or configure for our brake control. With the Somanet drives, we have a smart brake control and by this we mean that we can apply a pull voltage in the beginning that is usually higher and then after a certain time called pull time we apply the hold voltage. So here you can see that we can configure the pull voltage in millivolt, also the hold voltage and the pull time in milliseconds. We also support different uh, brake control styles for clutch style or for pin brake control. If you have problems understanding what one of these objects is, you can always click on the information button next to it and then it will give you a brief description on what this object is and this can help you um, understand better how to configure the objects. Here we have an object called controller disable delay and this is a delay that will be applied to disable the controller after engaging the brake because due to the mechanical design of the brakes, they take a little bit of time till they're actually engaged. On the bottom here, we can see the DC bus voltage that we are, that, that we are measuring. Um, basically, we need to measure it because we are using PWM to generate the desired pull voltage and the desired hold voltage. On the right side, we have the minimum displacement and the maximum torque, and these are only relevant if we have pin brake control configured. So for the minimum displacement, this is the distance that the motor has to rotate or the minimum distance that the motor has to rotate in order for the drive to be sure that the brake was released. And this is the maximum torque that will be applied during this release procedure. This output voltage in millivolts is only relevant if we have a manual output voltage. Underneath it is the switching frequency the user can choose between 16 kHz, 32 or 64 kHz. After the brake has been all configured, then the user can test the brake with this button to release it or to engage it. So when we click on releasing the brake, we will get a warning telling us please make sure that releasing the brake is safe and then we can confirm again to release it. And then we can engage it back again. After the brake configuration, we need to set up our motor. So in this section, it is very important to read the motor's datasheet carefully and extract the necessary data and take in the units into, into consideration. The first object to configure is the number of pole pairs, and then we need to configure the torque constant in micronewton meter per amp, the motor rated current in milliamps, and the motor rated torque in millinewton meter. We need to also configure the phase resistance in micro ohm and the phase inductance in micro henry. Usually in motor data sheets, the phase resistance is written in phase to phase or line uh, resistance, and therefore you need to divide this by two. Same thing goes for the phase inductance. On the bottom half, we have the limits of our motor, which are basically the motor maximum current, maximum torque, and our motor's maximum speed. The unit of the maximum current is in per mil of the rated current. So for example, if we have a rated current of 2 amps and the maximum current is 2000, this means that the maximum current is 4 amps. You can also convert this on the UI level if you click on the unit, you can change it from per mil to milliamps. Same thing goes for the maximum torque. It is a value in per mil of the rate of torque and you can also change it on the UI level to millinewton meters to, um, to a more user-friendly conversion and the motor's maximum speed in RPM. 
After finishing the motor configuration, the next step will be the encoder configuration. So on the top, you can see a picture of our drive, and then we have the different encoder ports that, are, that can be configured. So if you hover the mouse on top of one of these ports, you can see it blinking in the image above, and therefore you can easily know which port you are currently configuring. If I have my encoder connected to port number one, all I have to do is to click on add encoder, and here we can configure our encoder. The first thing to choose is the encoder type that we are using. And depending on which encoder type we choose, we will have a different configuration panel or different objects to be configured. But the essential ones that are common for all encoder types are the resolution, um, the polarity, if it's normal or inverted, and what is this encoder used for? Is it being used for commutation, velocity, position, or we can even have a combination. It can be used for commutation and velocity. All you have to do is to click them and choose them. After configuring our encoder, we can then test it. So if it is possible to rotate the motor shaft manually, we can um, release the brake if we have one, and then rotate the motor shaft manually and see the knob moving to check if our encoder is working fine or not. Once we have checked that our encoder was properly configured and our position signal is as expected, we can go to the next step. We click on done and then we can go next. After finishing the encoder setup, the last step is the offset detection. Um, and here we are going to try to find a commutation angle offset between what we call the electrical angle and the mechanical angle. The electrical angle is the angle of the magnetic field and the mechanical angle is what we are actually reading from uh, the sensor, from the encoder itself. Here in the middle you can see a slider, so this will be the amount of torque that we want to apply or the amount of current that we want to apply on the motor during this procedure. It is a percentage of the rated current of the motor and um, then we can click on start offset detection. Once the procedure is over, we will have um, a commutation angle offset value that is it is a value that is modulo of 4095 and it is in electrical degrees so zero means zero electrical degree and 395 will be 360 electrical degrees once this is all over we can click on finish and it will automatically save the configuration to our drive and takes us to the playground so this was all for today's video about the setup wizard in the Oblac Drives tool. In case you are facing any issues with your motor, brake or encoder configuration, please reach out to us to support at synapticon.com. Please take a look at the documentation link down below and thank you very much for your attention.